Up at 1.45 a.m., hoping it's just a bad dream, but it's reality every Wednesday through Saturday. First, I check the Weather Channel to see what's new in this ever-changing science. I get to work between 3.30 and 3.45 a.m., depending on how many times I hit the snooze button. I'm the first on-camera meteorologist to walk in on a very busy meteorological staff preparing the morning forecast maps and products. My job title is Morning Coordinator, and my first job is to check the weather video from the previous night. I also see what special graphics the morning team can use to enhance their presentations. The Weather Channel's morning format of features comes from a prescription doctored to fit the morning drive efforts as well as advertising needs. One of the two team members decides who will present each feature, such as the good morning forecast or this morning's weather or even the skier's forecast. They coordinate this effort with Master Control, where everything you see, commercial, tape features and talent on the air, are all integrated into the Weather Channel's 24-hour clocks. It's 4.20 a.m. and it's time for me to get my team's morning format in the Quantel. The Quantel is simply a storage computer. Our meteorologist, Dave here, for example, creates the map, gives it a number, and then we take that and store it into the Quantel to use on the air later. Briefing! Time to round up the troops and get the lead forecaster to brief us on the weather pattern and how it relates to our map products. This is usually my first look at the overall picture. The briefing takes about 15 minutes, and as you might guess, each meteorologist, on camera and behind the scenes, has a different opinion about the future. Thanks, Alex. Well, now it's about 4.45 a.m., and all the 75 map products that were created overnight are stored in the Quantel. It's my job as morning coordinator to check these maps for any discrepancies or missing frames. At 5 a.m., the first team is on the air. It's time for me to get into the weather. Then I read the medium and long-range thinking from the previous day to see how other meteorologists incorporated all the different computer models into the weather picture. The key is to put this complex information together in a way that the people at home can understand. 5.45, time to put on some makeup, grab a microphone, and head into the studio. Now here at the Weather Channel, we have no cameramen or floor directors, so we have to adjust our own camera height. Pretty easy. That's the first thing we do. Then we put a list of map products into the Quantel Studio computer right, so that everything is ready to go at the top of the hour. Okay. Thanks. Well, it's showtime, and I actually think it's a lot easier to talk to the camera than it is to a group of live people. And how I do that is to create an audience out there of students who, I imagine, give me 100% of their undivided attention. And if I lose my energy or my focus during my broadcast, I feel like I'm letting those students down. So I'm always going to stay up because I imagine that they're listening to me and they want that information. That's how I work on the air here at the Weather Channel. When severe weather threatens, the action moves to the update desk. Good day to you. Thanks for tuning in. We're here live in the Weather Channel Forecast Center as we continue to monitor Bob, a different satellite perspective than what we've been showing you. I was never trained as a television anchor man, so it's a pretty big challenge to try and tell the weather story in this completely different role. Let me show you the radar to this area. This is another thing that's just been very, very dramatic with this hurricane. Uh, torrential rains. Portsmouth, Boston, Providence, Worcester County here, back to the Connecticut Valley. Look Going on location to cover a possible severe weather event is an even bigger challenge. There's no map, no John Hope, and no warm, cozy studio. Just me and the crew trying to bring a piece of Mother Nature's worst into the viewer's living room. It can be rather difficult trying to report with an 85 mile per hour wind in your face. And Jim, you're looking very soggy and you can see the trees swaying in the background. 
Yeah, they really, whoa, we, they really are. We just got, we have to, during the past hour, this has been the most uh, steady wind we've had, about 40 to 45 miles an hour with occasional hurricane force gusts. So we're talking about wind today. Hurricane Andrew was another great experience in my career. Well, first I sat and talked to Dennis Smith in Coral Gables, Florida, early that morning at the time of landfall. And uh, again, the western eye wall coming on across the barrier islands as we speak right now. And Dennis Smith is not too far away. We're going to go to him, and he is in Coral Gables, Florida, near the Hurricane Center. Dennis, what kind of weather are you experiencing right now? Right now, I think we're just about as uh, bad as it's been since we've been here. Uh, we've had probably an occasional wind gust. I'm guesstimating that we probably topped 100 in this last 10 minutes. It continues to be quite strong in the winds. The wind is really uh, ripping around. We have heard sounds of roaring from the winds overhead. We have uh, heard some uh, glass being shattered out. We have heard some of the roof being peeled back, the metal part, and continuing to slide on off into the roof uh, line. Uh, we have no contact. When I saw what this monster had done when the sun came up that next morning, I could hardly believe my eyes. Then I traveled to Louisiana to face the second landfall from a storm with Category 5 type damage. As soon as we saw the tornado, she panicked, I panicked. We didn't know what to do. So I told her, I said, Nita, come on, let's get in the car. Get the kids' clothes, I mean, get, get the kids' shoes and let's get in the car. But she couldn't find the shoes. Thank God she couldn't find them. Because as soon as she couldn't find them, I told her, we don't have no time. So we ran inside the house, and no sooner than I was closing the front gate, which that's the front door right there, no sooner than I was closing that, the tornado was tearing these two houses right here up. It was just tearing them up. And then I closed the door, and I told everybody in the bathroom, in the bathroom, let's get in the middle bathroom. We all got in the middle bathroom, and about two seconds later, just two seconds later, the house was gone. But it wouldn't all look so easy without the people behind the scenes. From the master control operators to the forecasters, these people are the nuts and bolts of the Weather Channel's 24-hour operation. The hours may stink, and at times, excellent work goes unnoticed. But just knowing that each and every meteorologist in the country starts his or her day with a briefing from the Weather Channel is a compliment to all of us who work here.